you feel it? The power within. Kombu, dried kelp, Japanese kelp, often harvested from the shores of Hokkaido, which is in the northern part of Japan. Maybe you could smell it or taste it too if you have a really strong imagination. Kind of like the ocean, if you ask me. And you might never have expected these blackish, brownish, greenish, uh, kelp slash seaweed looking things had much going for it. Now, did you? Definitely not as much power as what was just going on with me, which I don't know what was going on. Konnichiwa, Pat Tokuyama here, creator of All Day I Eat Like a Shark and the Japanese Cooking Club, where I help people learn how to make plant-based Japanese food. If this is your first time here, consider saying hello in the comments below, as well as subscribing and hitting the alarm bell if you want to see more plant-based Japanese cooking videos, kind of like this one today. <laughs> So if you've heard of shojin yori or Buddhist cuisine, you may have uh, learned that a lot of the dishes in that type of cooking call for plant-based dashi. So there's only a handful of types, one of which is going to be kombu, is one of the more common ones, as well as shiitake dashi. So those two are often used in this type of cooking. And this is the vegetarian Japanese food that is eaten by Buddhist monks or tourists like yourself if you're gonna be visiting Japan in one of the temples uh, overnight. Maybe you can stay there and enjoy this type of cuisine and have a taste yourself. And it doesn't call for any animal products. So chances are, if you haven't done that yet, put that on your to-do list, your bucket list, and you might be pleasantly surprised. So when it comes to plant-based Japanese cooking, like I mentioned, kombu dashi and shiitake dashi or the combination of kombu shiitake dashi are gonna be used quite often. Depending on the dish that you're gonna be making, of course, but when it comes to soups, stews, things like nabemono, uh, simmered foods, any kind of uh, soaked vegetables, uh, you're gonna be using one of those two or three uh, types of dashi. And if you are interested in this type of Japanese cooking, plant-based Japanese cooking, these two ingredients, kombu and shiitake, are going to be making a frequent appearance in your kitchen, which is a good thing. And speaking of uh, good things appearing all of a sudden, maybe if you believe in omens or are able to read signs from the universe better than other people can, I just finished reading this book called The Alchemist, which is a awesome beautiful short story about this boy who goes to uh, search for the great pyramids of Egypt as part of I think it was his dream and uh, along the way of course he has an adventure and a few things happen to him and he changes course slightly but uh, overall one of the themes in that book was the ability to pay attention to your surroundings and read into things that occur so maybe you watching this video, for example, is a sign in from the universe telling you that maybe you can consider trying to cook more plant-based foods or plant-based Japanese foods to be more specific with kombu dashi or shiitake dashi. What do you think? Could this be a sign? So as it pertains to kombu dashi, I think I remember the first time I tried using it experimentally and tried marinating various vegetables, including tofu, as well as uh, using it in some of my favorite dishes like nabemono. Totally life-changing. Just like that, life changed and a totally different direction, which is uh, where I headed in terms of my cooking and my food interests. Uh, definitely piqued my interest in uh, shojin ryori as well as uh, tofu and here I am today with one Japanese tofu cookbook under my belt and as well as a plant-based Japanese cooking cookbook. So anyways, without further ado, here are five of my favorite ways to use kombu dashi. If you haven't yet used this before, let these five things serve as your inspiration. So the first is going to be furofuki daikon, which is daikon radish that has been simmered in kombu dashi. But you can't just take daikon radish, cut it up and simmer it in kombu dashi. You've actually got to do one thing first, and that is use togijiru. Togijiru is rice rinse water, yeah, the white cloudy stuff that you get when you rinse your rice before cooking it. And you do rinse your rice before you cook it, right? And I guess it depends on the type of rice that you're cooking or what you're trying to achieve and your personal tastes or preferences, or maybe you just didn't know you were supposed to do so. Yabai. So anyways, if you are able to try furofuki daikon with the daikon radish that has been simmered first in togijiru and then again in kombu dashi, 
you're gonna be in for a pleasant and delicious treat. So the second dish or dishes is gonna be uh, nimono. Nimono is simmered food in Japanese and there's a variety of different ways that you can simmer your vegetables or your food Japanese style, but we're just gonna be talking about two particular uh, favorite ingredients of mine, which are gonna be one, it's gonna be tofu. Like I mentioned, if you've never simmered your tofu in kombu dashi, it adds a very delicate and unique umami packed flavor profile, which you may or may not enjoy depending on your preferences and if you like the flavor of kombu plus tofu. But it's one of my favorites and whenever I'm making a tofu salad, for example, uh, that's one of the things that I do to add a different layer of flavor and complexity into each bite as part of my salad. And then the second ingredient is kabocha, Japanese pumpkin, which you may have seen before. It's a beautiful orange color and uh, only if you remove the skin, of course, if you don't remove the skin, depending on what you're using it for, it may turn sort of like a puke green, which isn't so appetizing. So keep that in mind, but simmered kabocha or kabocha nimono is another delicious way that you can also enjoy your kombu dashi. So if you're ever in Japan and get a chance to eat some of the food there, Kyoto in particular is famous for certain types of cooking. In fact, kyoryori is Kyoto style cooking. So there's a whole category of that type of cuisine and that includes tofu, tofu ryori, as well as kaiseki ryori, shojin ryori. Um, so all of those different types of cooking uh, you can find in the Kyoto area and one of those types of cooking that is my favorite is tofu also known as yudofu. If you want something delicate, very light, very uh, full of rich tofu and soy flavor, try simmering your tofu in kombu dashi either hot or cold depending on what you're going to be making. So cold would be great in a salad and hot would be yudofu. And if you want something more rich, dense and slightly sweet uh, maybe you can try kabocha nimono and try that out with kombu dashi and see how you like that. So the third dish is going to be nibitashi, which is sort of like simmered and then soaked vegetables. There's a lot of different ways you can prepare this as well. So regarding nibitashi, my question for you is do you like tasting the ingredient or is the ingredient more of a vehicle for the seasoning or do you like both? Why not both? So kombu being somewhat mild in flavor and naturally restrained, it's gonna really highlight the ingredients uh, that you're cooking in the dashi. So that helps to bring out additional flavors that you may not have noticed because that's what umami does. That's the whole reason why you're gonna be using dashi in the first place. One is to bring out the flavor and then two, enjoy the experience, right? So the fourth dish is gonna be another one of my favorites, also known as chirashi zushi. So chirashi zushi is one of my favorite dishes because it's about as simple as you can get in terms of sushi, especially at home when you're in the mood for sushi, but you don't necessarily wanna spend a bunch of time or energy cutting rolls up into small pieces or maybe even rolling something as simple as tamaki zushi which are the hand rolls or chirashi zushi if you've never heard of it before all you got to do is season your sushi rice and then put that into a bowl or a box if you have one and then put your toppings on top of that and it'll be ready to eat john just like that john 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 it is mendoksaku nai that means it's no problem, no fuss, no trouble at all, which is why it's one of my favorite ways to enjoy sushi at home. And if you've ever made sushi rice at home, there is one trick that you can do to enhance the flavor, and that is to drop a piece of kombu in the rice cooker as you're cooking your rice. And that way you're sort of making a kombu dashi at the same time that the rice is cooking, and all of the rice uh, grains get immersed in kombu umami goodness and it really helps to improve the flavor. So if you haven't tried that out yet, make sure to give it a try the next time you make it. Let me know how it goes. And aside from making the kombu dashi and the sushi rice at the same time simultaneously, the other thing that you could do with your kombu dashi is to cook your vegetables that you're going to be using for the chirashi sushi in some dashi. So in general, there's two ways that I like to prepare my vegetables for chirashi zushi. One is gonna be in dashi and or a soy sauce based seasoning, or the second is gonna be sort of vinegared uh, slash pickled. So those are two of my favorite ways to season my vegetables for chirashi zushi. And chances are you'll probably like at least one of them, if not both and uh, you can try that as well. And the last way, the fifth way that you might wanna try using your kombu dashi is in nabemono or Japanese style hot pot. So there's many different types of hot pot or nabemono and some of which call for uh, kombu dashi, some might call for 
kombushi takedashi or traditional dashi, like the kind that contains fish. But uh, because we're being plant-based, we are going to be using kombu dashi. And one of my favorite kombu dashi nabemono dishes is going to be uh, this thing called mizore nabe. Mizore nabe is uh, basically like a sleet nabe or hot pot. So sleet is kind of like the direct translation of mizore. And the reason that it gets its name is if you see the dish, it kind of does look like sleet. And that's because it has a bunch of grated daikon radish. So daikon oroshi is grated daikon radish, and you have a ton of that on this pot pot, and it adds a beautiful, delicious, aromatic, slightly pungent, slightly peppery, slightly spicy, depending on the time of the year that you're using your daikon radish, to each bite, to each bite that you get out of this hot pot. Maybe you should give it a try if you haven't tried it yet. This dish is actually one of the uh, recipes that's in my new Japanese cookbook. Check it out in the description below if you want to learn more about plant-based Japanese cooking. So in addition, uh, aside from the mizora nabe, which is another one of my favorite hot pots, uh, yudofu, like I mentioned before, is especially delicious, not only if you're using kombu dashi, but soy milk, homemade soy milk of course, and even better, homemade tofu. So it doesn't get any better than that. If you haven't tried that combination before, then give it a try and let me know what you think. And if you want to learn how to make tofu from home, also make sure to check out the description below for the soy, tofu, and okara workshop or the Japanese cooking club for additional plant-based Japanese cooking inspiration. May the good Lord shine a light on you warm like the evening sun i'm not a good singer hence maybe that's the reason why i don't really like karaoke anyways i digress uh so i'm curious now that you have five delicious ideas for you to use your kombu dashi uh which do you think you'll try first and if you've already tried some of these which do you think you'll try next and uh, let me know in the comments below right now what you think. So if you want to see more plant-based Japanese cooking videos, kind of like this one, which gives you some ideas and inspiration for how to use certain Japanese ingredients, subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share this with a friend if you got value out of it, because if you did, chances are they will too. And see you guys in my next video. Kyotsuketene. Take care. Bye-bye. So we just went into Kompo Daito, which is the big orange building over there. Unfortunately, they don't let you take pictures, so you'll just have to see it for yourself. But they had three big Buddha statues, as well as different pillars with multicolored images of different, I think they're bod bodhisattvas, potentially, praying. And it was very nice inside, very cold, but very well preserved. Not really sure what this building is, but I know that building is the Kondo building. which actually finished construction in 800, 835 AD. Apparently it was destroyed by fire six times. And the last fire was in 1926. So the present building that we see here was built in 1934. So the Kompo Daito building that we, that we just looked at, the orange one behind me, apparently that was also finished around 887 AD and it was finished after Kobodaishi entered or attained eternal meditation, as it says here. So if you'd like to see what you can use your dashigara kombu, which is the kombu that has been used to make kombu dashi, because you don't want to throw that away, that would be motai nai, which would be wasteful. Check out this video. You might want to check out one of these videos somewhere over here.